Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about three tips you can use to make your scenes more realistic in Blender. Okay, so if you're new to Blender and you're thinking, how do I make my scenes look realistic? One simple thing you can do to start your scene out is to actually begin with pre-made assets. There's nothing wrong with starting out with a bunch of assets that have already been created, especially if they're high quality, high detail assets, because it's gonna really elevate your entire scene without you really having to do much. Now, one of the really awesome resources that I love is Polyhaven. Dot com. I'll just show you their website here. These guys are fully Patreon supported and they've got some amazing stuff on here. So if you go to polyhaven.com and we come down here, we've got HDRIs, textures, and models. This is like the place I go to because it's all free open source stuff. So it's easy for me to use for my tutorials. So I really appreciate what these guys are doing. They do not sponsor any of my videos. So this is a genuine plug. I really love what they do. Anyways, if we go over to models, you can see we've got all these amazing assets and having a browse of an asset library like this is really useful. If you've got an idea in your head, you're like, I wanna make a scene, you can find some pre-made bits that will kind of help to supplement your scene and decorate it, you know, make it look a little more realistic. It'll save you so much time and it really will do a lot to increase the realism of your render. So I'm gonna grab a couple of cool assets here, this root cluster, I think, maybe some dandelions, do sort of an outdoor scene. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these and I'm gonna download them. Now I'll just show you, if I click here, for example, um, we've got different levels of quality. Um, now, if you're gonna be really close in on stuff, you wanna try and download things with the highest quality texture or like the, the largest texture possible. So 8K here would be great if we're gonna be really tight in close, but if you're gonna be far away, it's not as necessary and you can live with something like a 1K texture. So just bear that in mind as you're doing that. So now just as a side note, if you don't know how to import outside files into your Blender file, um, you just go file and append if it's a Blender file. So you can see here, I can go to uh, this root cluster. So just click this and then you can go inside and select anything here. Most likely collection will be what you want and you can grab whatever collections in there and that will bring in the asset. Really good tip. So I've downloaded just a few different assets and just brought them into my scene. I've got this uh, root cluster here. I've got this rocky ground and I've got some dandelions uh, just right here and a couple of grass patches. And I've just moved them around and I could duplicate these with shift D and just put a whole bunch in the scene and uh, just create a little bit of variation in scale and size and rotation and just slowly fill out the, uh, the level of detail that I want. So my second tip is to find a really cool HDRI to light your scene. Now, what's an HDRI? If you don't know, it's one of these large rectangular images that is a photograph of a reflective sphere that has been spread out really flat and wide. And what this does is we can place a texture like this onto the the sort of the world sphere. So the sphere that surrounds your scene, it's this sort of infinite sphere. And by putting this kind of a texture onto it, Blender can look at the bright values and the dark values of that texture and use it to simulate the lighting from an environment. Now, this is a really great method of creating really awesome photoreal effects in your scene. So let's grab one. I'm gonna head over to Pally Haven again, and I'm gonna go over to HDRIs and just click browse. And we've got this huge selection and we can just pick anything we want. Um, maybe the snowy forest, that could be cool. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one here, Loter Waterfall. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna grab a, I'll grab an 8K tech, no, that's a bit too much. I'll grab the 4K texture, that'll be fine. And I'll download. Now, once you've downloaded your HDRI, you wanna go over to the shader editor. And we are going to switch from the object shader mode to the world shader. And at first you'll see you just have these two nodes. And if we switch over to render mode here, I'm using Eevee at the moment. Um, and you can see everything is just quite dull and there's not a lot going on here. And the whole world is gray. And that's coming from this node right here. We've got a strength value that we can turn up and down. And then we have a color swatch, which we can change the color of our scene, right? But we wanna put an image into this. So let's grab our HDRI. I'm gonna to go to first search and I'm gonna look for environment. Grab an environment texture and then I'm going to open and navigate to that file I just downloaded. All right, now that I've brought that in, I'm gonna take the color output and plug it into the color input of my background. And what this does is automatically lights my scene based on this surrounding HDRI. And you can see we look around and it's all around us. It looks really, really cool. 
If you're using cycles, it's going to look quite realistic out of the gate. So let's switch over to cycles and have a look. So you can see how nice this is looking. It's looking really, really nice. <laughs> but um, you can make it look nice in Eevee as well. It doesn't have to be cycles. Cycles, you kind of switch on and everything's just going to start looking really amazing. Eevee, you got to use a few extra settings. So we're going to turn on ambient occlusion. We're going to turn on bloom and we're going to turn on screen space reflections. Those three are going to make a big difference for us. So the next tip that I've got is to use one key light to light your scene at the start. So don't get overloaded with a lot of different lights. You want to pick one light and make that the predominant light in your scene. So that plus the HDRI will really combine to make a nice look. A really good tip is actually try and line up your main light, main light with the angle of the sun from the HDRI. So we can have a look at where the sun was in this image. And I don't know if we can tell, oh yeah, right up here at the top. So if we kind of line up a sunlight, sun lamp, so it has the same angle, we're gonna get an effect that lines up with the lighting of our HDRI. So I'm going to go shift A and we're going to grab a light sunlight. So sunlights, they don't matter where they're positioned. All that matters is the rotation. They're like an infinite light source. So we can look at this and go, all right, the light's not pointing straight down. It looks like it's a little bit off to the side like this. And maybe it's a little bit like that as well. I might turn this light up a little bit just to get a slightly brighter feel. This light's going to be filtered through these trees as well, so it might have a tiny touch of green or maybe a little bit of blue as well into it. So we could just hit that a little bit to see how that goes. All right, now if you're in Eevee, an extra tip is to go over to Shadow under the Light tab and come over here and turn on Contact Shadows. That will give you a little bit of extra shadowing that works really nice. Next tip is to use Depth of Field. Depth of Field is when a camera focuses on a point that's close to the lens and everything else behind it falls off into a soft focus. And we can have that same effect here. So if I create a camera, shift A, camera, and I'll jump into my camera, and then I will lock my camera to view, and then zoom back here, and pick an angle that I like. Um, I like to also come over to my camera tag and, and cover to viewport display and turn up passport too. That really helps me focus on uh, you know, what my camera is actually seeing. I'll just create a little angle here. And now if I come down to depth of field here under the camera tab and turn it on, I can open this up and the smaller I set my f-stop, the more things are going to get out of focus. So I can bring it right down and then I can adjust my focus distance to find the thing that kind of matters. Like what's the focal point of my scene? Let's say we focus on this rock object. Now I can hold down shift and just drag up my f-stop to increase it a little bit. And now I'll have a really nice shallow depth of field in the background and here in the foreground. And so you can see if I looking around, like things are looking quite realistic now, the way that HDRI blends in with this foreground, um, it looks quite nice. I'm also going to grab a character for Mixamo. So I'm going to jump over to Mixamo.com and I've just had to look through the different characters they've got. It's a free thing you can use. It's got lots of different animations. So you just pick a character and then you go through the animations tab and pick an animation. And when you find one you like, you can download. Easy. So I'm going to go for FBX frames per second, 30 is fine. And yeah, I'll just click download. So once you download from Mixamo, you can go file import and you want to grab the FBX file type. Now that I've got a character in my scene, I'm actually going to focus on him. So uh, one thing you can do is if you jump out of your camera and you come down to the camera tab and then you turn on limits, you get this little crosshair you can drag. And this is actually the focal distance. So you can put this right where you want it. Cool. So I found a nice little low angle. I'm using my 50 millimeter lens at that shallow depth of field set to my character. And I've got this cool feel. It's all really coming together. So one last tip that I can give you that really kind of helps pop your scenes and bring a lot of realism is to actually have a little bit of noise in your camera. So if I don't have any animation in this camera in this particular shot, I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe for the location and the rotation. And I'm going to open up my graph editor and come over here and grab first the X rotation and grab modifiers and I'm going to add in a noise modifier and I'm going to turn the strength right down. So we'll jump to it with full stop on the keyboard and I'll take that strength down and I'll take the scale up so it's a bit slower. So 
Here's a little bit of drift. Turn the depth up to two. It just makes it a little more of a complex move. And then I'm gonna click this little button here to copy the modifier and I'll go to my Y and then I'll paste it and change the offset. Do the same thing for the Z, paste and change the offset. This time I'll go the other way. And now this nice little handheld drift. But now we also should probably have a little bit of drift in the position as if it's being a handheld uh, camera. So I'll throw some of the same noise in the X, Y, and Z location, being sure to change the offset each time. That moves the noise so it's not the same pattern repeated on all of them. Uh, it'll feel very different each time. So I know we're well past three tips at this point. You can stop watching the video if you'd like to just stick with what the thumbnail said, but if you want to keep going, I've got some more. I've got another one, actually. Um, you can go to the compositor. If we can move here to the compositor, click on click use nodes, and then you come up here and click this little drop down, and we're going to use the compositor in the camera so we can actually see it. And this is an EV, by the way. Um, and I'm going to come here and grab this, grab this over here, just to get myself some space. And then I'm going to grab a lens distortion node and drop this in. And I'm going to turn jitter on and that'll put a little bit of grain in my image. And then I'm going to turn dispersion on to 0 0.001 and maybe 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Yeah, there you go. So 0 0.1, you get this nice like chromatic aberration on the sides here. Maybe 0 0.05, just turn it a little bit. And with jitter turned on, you probably can't see it because the uh, YouTube compression, if I zoom right in, Oh, it's not going to do it any bigger zoomed in, but it just puts a little bit of grain in your image. It's quite nice. Looks good. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you did. And check out the Patreon or join here on YouTube where you can get access to the uncut versions of all of my tutorials. That's hours of extra content. So if you enjoy my stuff, check that out. You can get all my tutorials uncut. They usually run for about two hours long and they cover a lot of extra detail that I cut out along the way. So Go have a look at that. You can also get the project files from each month, including the project files for this month. If you go join up right now, you can check that out. Um, head over and read about that on the page and Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone who already supports this channel on Patreon. Appreciate you guys and everybody that supports on YouTube. You're amazing. Thanks for helping me keep this channel going. I will catch you guys in the next tutorial. Until then, have a good week. See you later. Yeah.